Okay. Hi, Carly. I'm glad that you made it to my show where everybody knows your name. I'm glad that we're here together and talk about great things that what's going on. Uh, right now, I'm going to uh, uh, ask you a few questions, if I may. Sure. Carly, what is your favorite song and why? Oh, my favorite song. Um, that's a good question, Mike. Um, right now, I would say it's Surface, surface Pressure from um, Encanto. We love that song around here. So right now, that's my favorite one. I think it sends... Um, a good message that we all kind of have to have a break from the pressure, right? And we have to kind of take care of ourselves sometimes when we feel that pressure. So, yeah. That's good. Charlie, what is your favorite movie and why? Oh, I'm really bad at answering this question too, because <laughs> I like so many movies. Um, but I would say... Any kind of movie. Any kind of movie. Um, I really like the movie Step Brothers. That's one of my favorites. That's I could good. watch that all the time, and it's always funny to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Carly, what is your favorite 1990 TGIF show? My favorite 1990 TGIF show. I don't know. Have you ever seen it? I haven't. <laughs> I couldn't believe is that. that a show? Yeah, TV show, is yeah. TGIF is? Yes. Oh. I don't know it. I can't believe that. Well, I was, was this from the 90s? Yeah. Well, I was born in 93. So I didn't really watch a whole lot of TV in the 90s <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that I remember. If you ever did, which show would you like to watch then? In the 90s? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what was around. I know when I was a kid, I really liked the show, um, The Big Comfy Couch. I think oh. that was in the 90s. I'm not really sure, but it could be. <laughs> Maybe early 2000s. I'm not really sure, but I loved that. I loved that show as a kid. Yeah. And what about Full House? Oh, Full House. Yeah. That's a classic. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that was 90s. Yeah. I loved Full House. And I watched Fuller House. Have you ever watched Fuller House, the newer yep. one? I, I'm in the middle of that good. right now. That one's good, too. Yeah. It's sad to see that um, one of the main characters. He passed away. Bob Saget. Oh, yeah, Bob Saget. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. He was a great actor. Yeah, he, he was a great TV dad. For sure. I agree. Yeah. Charlie, what is your favorite boy band song and why? Oh, that's an easy one. Uh, Backstreet Boys, Everybody. The song, mm. Everybody. My favorite. I just love it. It's a great song. Yeah. Yeah. Carly, what is your favorite vacation spot and why? My favorite vacation spot? Well, I would have to say um, Riviera Maya, Mexico. That's the my my favorite place that I've been to. Um, that's where I went on my honeymoon and it was beautiful. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, Riley, if you were an action crime fighter, who will you would like to be? An action crime fighter? Yep. Well, I would say Wonder Woman. Um, I guess she's like a superhero. She's a crime fighter, right? I would be, well, I guess, okay, I'd either be Wonder Woman, who's more of like, I guess they're both fictional characters, but I would either be Wonder Woman or more real life. I would be Olivia Benson from Law and Order. She's like, yeah, fantastic. Yep. Yeah. You know, you know what I would be? I'll be Batman. Love it. See, we would be a good team. Yeah. Wonder Woman and Batman. The Justice League, right? Yeah, they should do that. 
have that movie of Wonder Woman and Batman together. Yeah, I love it. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to talk about what, what you do at work sometimes. Is that okay? Sure. Carly, what inspired you to pursue a career in occupational therapy at the board here in Will County? So I guess occupational therapy in general, I've always just wanted to help people. Um, and so in high school, we had the opportunity to kind of shadow different jobs. And one of the jobs I shadowed was an occupational therapist. Um, a family friend of ours just said, just told me about OT one day and said that she thought I would be good at it. So I shadowed it and I loved it because there's so many different things you can do with it. You can work like I do in a community-based setting. You could work in a hospital, in a school, in a nursing home. Um, you could just work anywhere. So I really like it. And then when I, right after I graduated, um, one of our professors had sent out an email for a job at the Wood County Board of ED. And it sounded super interesting. I really liked the idea of being community-based. So I thought I would give it a shot and I love it. That's great. Yeah. I'm glad that, that you, you did. Thanks, me too. Carly, uh, how, uh, how do you stay up to date with the current developments and technology in OT? So I do a lot of continuing education or a lot of trainings. Um, it's been kind of nice. There's a lot of webinars available and stuff. So I, I watch a lot of those. Um, and I also really just whenever we get a request, I research to see what's out there and what's new. And so that's a, a really good way to learn too. Um, just when I you know need to find something, I look it up and then I kind of learn as I go. That's good. Yeah. Charlie, uh, do you support people with disabilities who use assistive technology during this DSP shortage uh, as of right now? Yeah, absolutely. So we receive quite a few requests for people who um, maybe they've been trying to find staff or they've been trying to fill certain shifts um, and they just can't. So some, sometimes they're open to trying assistive technology to see if that would help. Um, so a lot of like medication reminders or medication dispensers, that's a common one um, to help people get a little bit more independence with taking their medications. Mm -hmm. um, or just, you know, different sensors or remote supports so that people can maybe spend some time without staff, but they can still have the supports that they need. Yeah, I agree too. Charlie, if somebody with a disability is new to assistive technology, the first time, how do you help that person? So we would first do kind of an assessment to figure out um, if they're interested interested in assistive technology and what ways assistive technology could maybe help them. Um, and then once we decide, maybe we get some ideas of what could help, we really use our loan closet or when we have it open, Twin Tech, to help show people. Um, we also have some YouTube videos. We try to help show people what the technology looks like. And then with the loan closet, we can let them borrow it. So if they want to borrow something and kind of try it out in their own home or in their own lives, I think that can really help people to feel more comfortable. It kind of takes that fear of the unknown away and helps them to, to try it out themselves and decide if maybe it's something worth giving a shot. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. The next question is, uh, whenever uh, you work with and the housing coordinator that we have at work, uh, I just want to know, is it really adaptive for people? In in wheelchairs to wash their hands in a sink or be able to uh, do meal prepping for themselves? Yeah, so that's definitely something we help people with. So first, the washing the hands in a sink. So when you're thinking of adaptive, you might be thinking you put, um, you're asking for people specifically in wheelchairs, mm -hmm. washing your hands in a sink, the things we look at for that would be the cabinets under the sink. So a lot of times you have to cut out that cabinet or kind of modify the cabinet a little bit so that someone in a wheelchair could wheel up to the sink and have room for their feet and their legs so they're not like bumping into the cabinet. Yeah. 
Um, and then also they don't have to reach so far to reach into the sink. If they can roll up and get their legs under the counter, mm -hmm. makes it easier for them to, to wash their hands that way. We can also use like automatic um, faucets. So most like public restrooms nowadays have automatic faucets, but you can also get those installed in your house. Mm -hmm. So the automatic faucet can help because maybe the person also might have some fine motor coordination difficulties. So if they can use the automatic um, faucet, that's a little easier. Automatic soap dispenser, towel dispensers, all those things can make it easier too. Um, so those are some of the things we look at with the sink. Also, um, changing the temperature. So sometimes you can change your water temperature um, on your water heater to be a little bit like not super hot so that someone who might have reduced sensation in their hands, you don't want them to burn their hands too. So that's something else we think about. Um, and then meal prep. There's like a bajillion assistive technology devices for meal prep. Um, so I'll just go over some of my favorites. So there's, okay. um, let's see. So there's the liftware, that one, I guess that's not really meal prep. We'll skip liftware. There's the rocker knife. That's kind of a common one. Um, that can help you cut just using one hand. You just kind of rock the knife back and forth. That's a fun one. There's adaptive cutting boards so that someone um, can be a little bit more independent with cutting. There are, you can do like switch activated uh, devices to control things like blenders or um, maybe a toaster. I don't know if you can use it for a toaster, um, but you can use like switch activated devices for, for those sort of appliances. Um, you can also get all smart appliances. So they make, for example, smart microwaves. So you can kind of use Alexa or something to, to activate your microwave. That's pretty mm -hmm. exciting. Um, let's see what else. And just Alexa in general can be pretty cool. So what you can do with Alexa is you can look up different recipes on there. And if you have the Alexa with the screen, it can walk you through different recipes with visuals and videos. Um, and then it can also help you once you find a recipe, it can help you make a grocery list. Um, and you can even order your groceries right off of Amazon. So there's a lot you can do with that, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Induction um, stove tops can be really nice too. Do you know what that is? No, I don't. So induction stove tops are cool because they use induction to heat the food in the pan. Mm. So instead of having the surface of the stove get really hot like it usually does, it just uses induction. So the stove top, top itself with induction stoves don't get hot. Mm. So you can touch it with your hand and you wouldn't get burnt. Um, so that's really cool because some people, again, if they have um, reduced sensation in their hands, they might not really recognize when it's hot and then they can burn their hands pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Or um, they might have sensory issues or just cognitive issues where they can't always remember not to touch the stove because it can be hot. Um, so the induction can make that um, safer for people that have maybe those difficulties to be able to cook by themselves. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Carly, how do you help people in wheelchairs or people with disabilities like myself to organize their daily chores or taking care of themselves with assistive technology? If someone doesn't know how to use assistive technology, what can you do to help them to understand it? So I'll kind of start with the, the second part of that question first, um, since we did talk about it. All right, hold on. My kids are trying to come in, so let me lock the door. Okay. All right, got it, locked him out. Okay. Um, so if someone doesn't know how to use assistive technology, so same thing I said before, we try to kind of show videos or if we have the device, we'll go over the device with them, let them borrow it so they can really try it. Um, those are kind of the strategies we use if someone's not familiar with assistive technology. And then specifically like 
organizing daily chores and stuff, we have a lot of different visual schedule apps and programs. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple examples, we have ChoiceWorks which is a pretty simple one. You can do a visual schedule of different activities that you have to do. And then when you're done, you kind of swipe it over. You can set yourself timers. Um, so if you need to remember how long to do something, you can put a timer in there. And then at the end, you can kind of pick something to reward yourself, right? So a lot of times what I do is maybe I'll kind of write myself a to-do list, like do the dishes, sweep the floors, and pick up all the toys that are all over my house all the time. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm done, maybe I reward myself with dessert or, um, I don't know, a drink that I really like to drink. So sometimes I, you know, we all kind of do that. So it's the same thing on our, our visual schedule apps that we have. Um, and then there's other more complex ones, um, which I can't think of the name of it right now, but there's one where um, you can, oh, that's going to drive me nuts that I can't remember the name. I don't know. Anyways, we have it in our loan closet. So if it sounds interesting, I can always figure out what it is and tell you. Um, but we have one that's a little bit more complicated where you can do visual schedules, but they also have QR codes that kind of help you to remember how to do things. So for example, you can put a QR code on your washer and dryer. So when you go to do your laundry, you scan the QR code with your phone or your tablet, and then it walks you through the steps of how to do that chore. So that can be really cool too, to kind of, instead of trying to remember, okay, I'm gonna go do the laundry, but I have to go find my, my iPad to look up a video of how to do it the QR code is right there on whatever you're doing. So it, it kind of makes it easier to just look at that visual when you're right there doing it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are those are a couple options that we have um, that can help you kind of do a schedule. Another thing could be using something like an Alexa or a smart speaker and setting yourself reminders or routines. Um, and then that way you can kind of set up maybe every Monday at six, six is a bad time, it's probably dinner time. Like every Monday at seven, maybe you mop the floors or every Tuesday at, um, at like 9 a.m., maybe that's laundry time. So you can kind of set up different routines in Alexa or whatever your smart home device is that'll remind you of that routine. So those are some things we can help too. And that's a little bit more high tech, but low tech, just kind of making, using your calendar, right? Having a calendar on your fridge and kind of writing down what day is what chore um, and getting into a bit of a routine can help quite a bit. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm doing that with my own too. Oh, what do you use? I, I use uh, my own Alexa. Thing, uh, help me with my, uh, take my medications. That's awesome. Good for you, Mike. Yeah. I, um, so I use my phone. I have phone mm. reminders for my medications because I forget all the time too. Um, and then I really just use my paper calendar. I like my paper calendar on the fridge to kind of remind me of things to do, but I also use our Google calendar. My husband and I, we have a shared family Google calendar and that can be really nice because we have so many things to coordinate. So mm -hmm. we use that around here. That's what else good. do you use your Alexa for? Um, other things like I'm trying to come up with, with other chores to get done around the house, but I just, it's hard for me to get on there. Sure. Well, we can help you with that if you need it, but... Um, okay. Do you ever ask Alexa any questions or anything? Mm, not really. I just use it for timers when I put stuff in the oven. Yeah, we we have um, Google Homes at our house and we use them for timers all the time. We use them for timers. I like to ask the weather. Um, mm -hmm. Every day before work, I ask the weather to kind of see, do I need to wear my heavy coat, my light jacket, a raincoat? Because the weather around here, you know, is crazy. So yeah. To check in on there, yeah. That's good. Yeah, and Carly, is there a way to help people with disabilities and, and people in wheelchairs to grab things easily for meal prepping or and without dropping them? 
Yeah, so there's lots of different things. So um, a couple of things that we have, there's pull down cabinets. So kind of your upper, your higher cabinets in your kitchen, those can be hard to reach up into. So there's cabinets that can pull down um, and out of the higher cabinet. So that is something that we recommend for people. Um, and then there are different grips that you can use to kind of grab things and help with not dropping them or like with opening um, cans and stuff like that. There's different grippers um, and adaptive devices you can use. Um, reachers, you can use a reacher to kind of, those are like the, they have the little squeeze handle and they open and close to grab things. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Those are probably the most common things. That's good. And definitely just thinking about um, just the way that you organize your kitchen can help a lot too. Um, you know, using things, especially if you're in a wheelchair, kind of organizing it so it makes sense for you. Um, yeah. It doesn't have to make sense for anybody else, but if it makes sense for you, then it works. So kind of your more commonly used things you might want to put in the lower cabinets so you can reach them easier um, and kind of organizing so you have things by where they need to go. So putting like your pots and your pans by the stove, putting your oven mitts by the stove. So it kind of makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, that's all the questions I have prepared for you already. Is there any questions that you want to ask me? Sure. So let's see. What um, what assistive technology do you know or maybe you use that you think could be helpful for other people? I think uh, the um, um, Alexa's are a great option for people because it gives them good independence. Yeah, so you can do like routines on them. Yeah. You can do smart controls in your house. Like we mm -hmm. have our lights hooked, hooked up to them. Um, we use them as sound machines too. So we play ocean sounds at night. Um, you can ask the weather, like I kind of talked about doing your recipes, your meal prep. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff you can do for sure. And the nice thing about them too is they're pretty readily available. So pretty much, you know, they're not too, too expensive if you get kind of like the more simpler ones. Um, so that makes it easier too, because people can actually buy it if it's yeah. affordable. Um, and they're, since they are so popular and a lot of people use them, that really encourages the developers to make more skills for Alexa. That's what they call them, the different skills that you can activate. When they're that popular, it, it encourages them to make more skills and to kind of be creative and more things that they can do with them. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting too for Alexa, I think. And for really all smart speakers. Yeah, when you said that's a, you turn mine on too. Can I turn yours on? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I kept looking at mine because I'm afraid when I say Google, it's going to turn mine on. Yeah, sometimes I call mine Lexi. Lexi? Yeah, because then it yeah. won't hear uh, he's saying the whole word. Yeah, that's a good idea. Or if you call it like Echo. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, let's see, what's another question I could ask you? If there could be any technology in the world that either doesn't exist or that maybe is really fancy schmancy that we don't necessarily have our hands on yet, mm -hmm. like what is, what do you think would be the coolest thing ever? Um, I'm not really sure, but I'm sure there is something that we didn't, put our hands on yet but i'm sure there's a way that we could use technology with um the, the bathrooms maybe yeah yeah 
there's a lot that could be done in the bathrooms for sure. Helping people to be more independent, maybe using the bathroom or taking their showers. One that I think is really cool is the self-driving cars. Yeah. I'm really excited to see where that goes. I think that could be pretty cool because transportation is such a huge thing, right? Oh, yes. Yes. So I think self-driving cars could be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. more questions for me? Are you excited for Twin Tech when we open that back up again? Oh yeah. I'm excited for it. Me too. Yeah. Do you know where it's at this time around? No, I don't. It's in Bowling Green this time around. Nice. Right on Clunk Road. That's so pretty close really where I'm I'm living at. Oh really? Yeah. So it'll be so close to you. Yeah. That's exciting. Yep. It should hopefully be open in the fall. Um, nice. For sure, for sure by next year, but we're hoping for like the fall, maybe the end of this year. Nice. For it to be totally open. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yep. I let you know that the improvements, what they did when I go by. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. There's not too much they're doing on the outside. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I guess there kind of is. I think I think our yeah, plans are ready. one of the things that we have to do is we have to we have to make it more accessible. Yes. Um, so there's definitely going to be some renovations on the outside to make sure that there's a ramp to get in and everything of like course. that. Yeah. Uh, Any other okay. questions for me? Yeah, I got a few more. If you were a mermaid, okay. if you were a mermaid, what fish would you like to see? Ooh. Um, if I was a mermaid, what fish would I like to see? I think I would like to see all the whales. Mm. Whales are really fascinating to me because they're so big. Oh. I think it's crazy how, like, if you just think about how vast and how big our oceans are mm -hmm. to have gigantic whales. I don't know. I think whales would be cool. Yeah. As long as they're not like killer whales that would eat me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's play a game. Would you rather, if you like. Okay. Yeah. Would you rather be in a, in a uh, beach or somewhere that's cold? Oh, a beach, hands down, for sure. What That's about a, you? A beach. Yes. Getting a suntan, having my toes in the sand. Yeah. Taking a nap on the beach. Yeah. For sure. If you were on, on a deserted island, what one thing that you would bring with yourself? Oh boy, a deserted island. Um, hmm. I don't know, Mike. You go first. If you were on a deserted island, what's one thing you would bring? I'll bring a Wilson fireball. Say, Wilson! <laughs> oh, that's perfect. I love it. Gosh, I don't know. I'll tell you this much. I would be like the last person to survive if I was on a deserted island. I'm just not, I love being outdoors, but I'm not, I'm just not good at those survival skills. Mm. And they got caves there too caves yeah well that would be good I'd have some shelter because yeah. I'm trying to think okay so I would have shelter there would obviously be water because it's an island so yeah. I got to be able to get water I could get fish from the sea to eat the fish mm -hmm. I could make a fire I'm, yeah. I'm imagining trees on this island so I could eat that way yeah 
And coconuts. Coconuts. Love some coconut milk, some coconut water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I would bring. Mm -hmm. Your jewelry. That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. I really don't wear jewelry. This is just like one of lyrics. Um, one of my daughter's like hair ties. Oh. Otherwise, I really don't wear jewelry too much. Mm. That's all right, too. I don't know. There's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing I'm really that attached to. And I have three kids, so I can't pick one kid. You know? And you can pick whatever kid you want. <laughs> I can't. I wouldn't be able to pick one. I'd have to take all three. Mm hmm. Hey, you can count have all three because all there's one package there. It's a package deal, but yeah. I have to have my husband too. I of have course. to have my husband too. So like yeah. my family. Okay, there we go. My family. One package deal. I would bring my family with me. We'd yeah. all suffer together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and get a coconut for the, the radio to go for help. You know, that's a really good idea. A radio. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, what's the thing that, that you do on a typical day when you get home? Oh boy, I'm, I'm a pretty boring person. Um, when I get home, usually I play with my kids a little bit because I miss them while I'm gone. Um, we usually have dinner. And then we have kind of a lengthy bedtime routine. So really during the week, we just play a little bit, eat some dinner, and then we pretty much do our bedtime routine where we play. Um, we usually do like a puzzle or lyric will work on kind of some of our preschool skills. And then we'll read some books and go to bed. That's cool. And on the weekend, we just like to spend time together and do fun stuff. Like we like to have movie nights. We like to go places like the zoo, Cedar Point, Imagination Station. I really, mm -hmm. we just like to spend time together and go on new adventures. That's cool. And our kids yeah. love Bob Evans. So we go to Bob Evans all the time for breakfast. Yeah, whenever <laughs> you whenever you go to Cedar Point, what is your favorite ride? I love the Magnum. I don't know if that's still a ride even because it's been a while since I've actually ridden like the mm -hmm. roll, the big roller coasters, but the Magnum was always my favorite. That's cool. Do you know which one that is? Yeah, I do. The big red one. Yeah, I like it because it's big. So it's got the big hill, but it's also kind of long. So yeah. it's not like Millennium Force is a close second, but it's not like Millennium Force and the Dragster, which are really tall, but they're so quick. Oh, yeah. So you, you wait in line for like hours and then it's like a quick 20 second ride and you're done. Yeah. And I saw. Uh, What's your favorite one, ride? Yeah. When I saw the, uh, the director went up, I saw one came right back down backwards. Yep. The dragster, does, it does that all the time. I've never, I've ridden the dragster, but it's never been one of my favorites because that's one that you wait forever and it's so quick. And all the time, it doesn't make it over. They're actually, um, I don't think they're going to open it this coming season. Can't believe it had that. like, I know I just read um, in an article that there were some repairs that they had to make. Um, and so either they could make the repairs and open up the roller coaster, or if they didn't make the repairs, they wouldn't be able to open it. So yeah. I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah. Um, uh, when you, ever you go to Cedar Point, have you been to the water park there? Oh yeah, we used to go all the time when I was younger. I'm actually from Sandusky, and we got season passes every year, so we used to go all the time. I haven't yeah. been in a few years though to the water park. That's cool. Uh, what is your hoping to go place? this summer? Yeah, what is what is your happy place? What'd you say? What's your happy place? My happy place? I don't, this is so cheesy, but my happy place is really anywhere with my family. 
I just, wherever we go, it's so, you know, whether it's just like a hotel for a night, if it's just being at home, going on, you know, a road trip, just anywhere with my kids and my husband. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. No, if I Where's your happy place? My happy place is, is you and everybody at work. Oh, I love that, Mike. Yep, you, Joanne, everybody. Yeah, it's a great place to work. It's like a second family for sure. Yeah, me too. You, you, you guys are my, my second family. I think so too. I agree, Mike. Yeah. We always look out for each other. Absolutely. Uh, what, uh, what do you like to be, Batman or Superman? Well, that's a good one. I think I'd like to be um, a Superman. Because mm. Batman's not super, like, friendly. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty much kind of like, he likes to be alone, you know. I think of the Lego Batman movie. He likes to be alone, and Superman seems more social. He has, like, a you know, an actual job and friends and yeah, I'd be Superman. You'd be Batman, right? I'm definitely Batman because I love yeah because he flies with his cape and the chicks love the car. Yeah, that's very true. He has a much better car. I don't even know if Superman has a car. Yeah. He probably just drives like, you know, an average Joe car since he's like, a, you know, works as a Reporter or whatever. Yeah. Or yeah. or Superwoman. Yeah. Supergirl. I, I don't know if there's a Superwoman. There's a Supergirl though, right? I'm not sure. I should know this. My husband's a big superhero guy, but no. I think there's a Supergirl. And I want to say it's like Superman's sister, maybe. Could be. I don't know. That's probably wrong. Probably wrong. I don't know. Cousins? Maybe they're cousins. Could be. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. yeah uh, what What is your favorite uh, thing to do if when you're when you're by yourself? If you don't have kids, what you love to do? Oh man. Honestly, I well. I really like to listen to podcasts um, or like binge watch a show on a streaming service. That's cool. That's what I do whenever I don't have the kids. So like in my commute to and from work, I don't have any kids or anybody during that time, obviously. I listen to my podcast, which is really nice. And then every now and then on the weekends, when I happen to get some alone time, I just kind of put my feet up and watch a show or a movie. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, if, What's your favorite start, thing to do? Yeah, if I started a podcast, uh, would you like to join in? Oh, for sure. I love a good podcast. Good. Yeah, the podcast I'm listening to right now is, um, it's called Drama Queens. Mm. And it's all about One Tree Hill. Did you ever watch One Tree Hill? No. Ah, oh, such a good show. A classic. Yeah. You should check it out. It's on Hulu. That's good. Yeah. If there's, uh, if you were at, what is, what is your two songs that you would sing if we have a karaoke night? Oh, Mike, these are such good questions. I mean, I will be super, um, what's the word? Super stereotypical. I would sing some Journey, you know, Don't Stop Believing. That's a classic. Um, what's the other song I really like to sing? Um, I don't know. It's probably... What is it? Uh, remember that, uh, that song I 
and uh, 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 you were playing bocce with everybody. This is how we do. Oh. It. Oh, that's a good one too. I like that one. I could go for that. Yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, it's Smash Mouth in um, All Star. All Star, yes. I know like every single word to that song. That's good. Um, it was so funny. My kids went through kind of a Shrek phase. So we were watching Shrek like every day, multiple times a day. And and um, we got them a karaoke machine a couple years ago for Christmas. Mm. And All Star was like my go-to song because I just knew the words. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I what got songs would you sing? What, Carly? What songs would you sing? Uh, I'm not really sure, but I got so many songs. Um, You've got I, so many. Yeah, I got so many, though. Uh, you know that. Uh, there's two. Uh, one is This Is Me from The Greatest Showman. That's a good one. Classic. And the second one is Larger Than Life from Backstreet Boys. Our Backstreet Boys, Mike. you got to go with a Backstreet Boys song. Yep. Love it. Yep. Is there any questions that you want to ask me? Um, let's see. Did you watch any of the Winter Olympics? No. No? Do you ever watch the Olympics? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I watch uh, swimming. Yeah. Swimming is usually one that we like to watch, and we watch... Um, um, Oh, curling. Cur curling, right? Isn't yeah, that curling. what it is? Yeah, we like to watch that and we like to watch the hockey. We watched the hockey this time around too. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what I did over the weekend? What? I went to Special Olympics swimming. Nice. And you swam, right? Yeah. Yeah. I saw on Facebook the Wildcats did pretty good. Oh, yeah, we did. Brought home some gold medals, right? Some silver, yep, some bronze. I, did. I got one. One, was it a gold or what medal? I, did I got one gold medal for the 50 freestyle. Nice. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. That's exciting. Yep. And what I other really... sports? What? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, and then I came in third for the for the uh, relay. Nice, that's a bronze medal, right? Yep, and that's place for the front by three. Cool. Well, good job, Mike. Mass. Well, you know, sometimes that happens, right? Yeah. We can't win them all. We can't all be Michael Phelps. Yeah, I, I thought I was. You thought you were Michael Phelps? <laughs> yep. When I did that 50, I felt like him. Oh, I bet you did. You were probably on top of the world, huh? Oh, yeah. I love it. What other yeah. sports did the Wildcats participate in? Uh, basketball. Nice. Yep. And golf. Golf's not this season, right? What else was this weekend? Uh, this weekend was just, was just basketball and swimming. Just basketball and swimming? Yeah. Nice. How did the basketball teams do? I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm sure they are still going. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, this weekend, I was not doing any Special Olympics or anything really athletic, but I definitely enjoyed the weather. Yeah, you should have came out on Saturday. I'll just swim. Have I know. I was actually I was back home in Sandusky, so I wasn't in town. Oh. Um, we went back to see my mom and just spend some time outside. It was nice. That's nice too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite favorite flavor of ice cream? 
It is Toff's chocolate peanut butter. Toff's specifically. Yeah, that's my favorite ice cream. So good. Yeah. What's your favorite flavor? Cookies and cream. That's a good one too. That's probably my husband's favorite. Do mm. my always like. that flavor. That's right. Great minds think alike. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite um, ice cream store to go to in the summer? Do you have a favorite place? Oh, yeah. Mr. Freeze. Oh, Mr. Freeze is the bomb. Yeah. And I yeah, think they might be open. I think they are, too. I think the one in Perrysburg is open. Yeah, I think so, too. So exciting. Yeah. I I always go there all the time with my grandparents all the time, and get what oh, we get so nice. all the time. We get turtle Sunday. Oh, turtle Sundays are so good. Yeah, I get that with my with my grandmother. Nice. Yeah. I like usually I like to get like a tin roof Sunday. Do you know what's on the tin roof? Yeah. Yeah, I like to get the tin roof or like a Buckeye Sunday. Those are my favorite. That's good. I like orange yeah. Kool too. Ooh, I've never had that. It's uh, uh, flavored. It's all twist with vanilla and orange sherbet, something like that. Oh, the, the orange sherbet. Oh, yeah, I love that. That sounds delicious. Yeah. I forgot that they had that. I do like that. Yeah. I get that with, with my mom all the time. That sounds yummy. Yeah. I can't wait for warmer weather so I, we can go get ice cream all the time. Yeah. And go to the parks. Have you been to a, the Perrysburg Inclusive Park yet? Not yet. I'm, I can't wait for the Bowling Green to come. Yeah, should hopefully be the end of this summer. That's good. Fall, maybe. I hope so. That's what we're shooting for, Mike. Fingers crossed. Yeah. We've got the duck drop. You Did you see the, the stuff about the duck drop? No. Did you watch the duck drop last year? I think it was last year. No, I just seen it. No. So we have the duck drop going on where we, it's exactly what it sounds like. We sell little rubber ducks mm -hmm. and everybody's duck has a number on it. And then last year we took them up in a big tractor and the tractor dumped the ducks and whichever duck was closest to the center of the bullseye mm -hmm. won first place. Um, and this year they're going to be using Bowling Green, a Bowling Green fire truck. So they're going to yes. go up in the fire truck and drop them. Yeah. So I yeah. think we've sold like 2,000 ducks so far. Wow. I know it's crazy. Yeah. You know, I went to Columbus about a few days ago with Brent Bayer with talking to our uh, state legislators. Yes, that's right. State Advocacy Day. How did that go? It went great. What did you guys talk to the legislators about? I talked about uh, remote supports, what you've always done for at work. I mentioned that a lot and during this time. That's awesome, of, Mike. Yeah, during this time of, of need with this BSB crisis. Absolutely. What else did you guys talk about? I talked about the inclusion a little bit, like how we get the, the dis out of the disability. Bring those nice. down. That's awesome, Mike. Yeah. I and love I, it. And I really got to her. She had great ideas how we could get hurtful language out. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. I'm too. sure you guys represented us well and you did such a good job advocating. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. If, if you were an advocate, which stuff that you would advocate for yourself or for others like myself? 
Yeah. So I think I would advocate, of course, for assistive technology um, because I think there's so much that we can do with it and it can just help people be so independent and so safe. Um, I love assistive technology. So I think that would probably be my number one thing. Um, but I would also just advocate for um, just better accessibility and inclusion just in the community. So obviously, you know, with the inclusive playgrounds, I'm all about that. Um, making more like public transportation more inclusive and more accessible. Um, public buildings in general um, and educating. I also think there's a lot of education that can be done with contractors mm -hmm. um, and building, you know, accessible housing, accessible, affordable housing. That would be a big one too. Um, I think that's a huge need. Um, and not just for people with disabilities, but really for everyone, because as everyone ages, you know, we're all going to need those accessibility features. Yeah. So I think it could just be so important to just, just to get more awareness of that kind of stuff. Those are all the, all of my favorite things, I think. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. Great yeah. minds think alike. Think. What? I said great minds think alike. That's true too. Yep. You know it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's a nice shirt you're wearing. Oh, thanks. Where did he it's get it? Old... What'd you say? Where did he get that shirt from? Actually, I got it from my mom. I don't know what store she got it from. Oh. Does she make it with her own two hands? No. <laughs> I wish she could make, make my clothes, but she cannot. <laughs> <laughs> What is your favorite joke? My favorite joke. Oh, man. You're the jokester, Mike. What's your favorite joke? Um, uh, the knock-knock jokes. Yeah, those are definitely your favorite. Yeah. I don't know. I like a lot of classic dad jokes, but right now I can't think of any good ones. I don't know. I, I think it's more fun. I don't really like to tell jokes. I think it's more fun to like find, try to find out what the answer is or like the response. I think that's fun. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? I am. Hi, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Carly, you messed that up, but you always got I, I always mess that one up for you. Yeah. I'll okay, try again. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? I am. I am who? I am whoever you want me to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want you to be Mike. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you always say I am Carly all the time when I tell that joke to you. Remember that? Yeah, but don't you say it different when you do that? No. Oh. I don't know. I remember that. That's what I mean. See, I like to kind of change the joke or give the response. That's my, yeah. that's where I think it's fun. Yeah. What is your hidden talent? My hidden talent. Um... Gosh, I don't know. I don't know if it's necessarily hidden, but I'm a really pretty organized person. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that's hidden or not. I'm also really pretty good at puzzles. That's good. I love putting together puzzles, and I can do them pretty quickly. Yeah. What's Even with three crazy kids. <laughs> yeah. What's one thing that, that I don't know about you? Um, ooh, that's a good one. Um, 
One thing you don't know about me. Uh, maybe you don't know that I gave a presentation at a world conference in Scotland. That's cool. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. All right, there you go. Yes, when I, um, right after I graduated from undergrad from Ohio State, that's the summer after, I did a presentation in Scotland. Nice. Yeah. It was all about um, play with infants. Nice. Yeah, I did. A, I participated in a research program um, while I was at Ohio State. So it was all about um, child development, infant development, that sort of stuff. It was pretty cool. Scotland was a beautiful place. I wish yeah. I could have stayed longer. Yeah, is that the, the one that, that you signed your name and gave it to me then? That paper that you, you wrote your name on? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I think it is. Oh, no. That, no, I know what you're talking about. That was my research study at the University of Toledo, which was published. Yes, I did. I forgot I autographed that for you, Mike. Um, yes, that was our study that was published from the University of Toledo. I only presented that, I think, at the Ohio OT conference, probably. We might have presented it at the American Occupational Therapy Association conference. I can't remember. Wow. Um, but yeah, that one's published. And that one's really pretty cool because every now and then it'll randomly be like cited or shared on Facebook. Um, just recently on like, a, I think it was like a school-based OT Facebook page or something like that. They had shared, or maybe it was early intervention. Um, they shared it as kind of like a, a graphic that just talks about how less toys is better than more toys. Um, and then they cited our research article. So I thought that was pretty cool. It randomly pops up every now and then. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, what's, uh, what's one thing that you don't know about me? Well, I don't know. You tell me what's one thing I don't know about you. There's one thing that you don't know about me that I am passionate to, uh, about, as, as, about assistive technology. Well, I love that, Mike. I hope you could help me to figure out what's things that I need to advocate for as the technology base. Sure. Well, I am, you know, as part of the, part of the strategic plan, yeah. um, you know, my part is all about the assistive technology. So maybe you could be on my committee. Okay. Would you like to be on my committee? Of course. All right. Well, let me see what I can do, Mike. That would be great to have you. Yeah. And I want to say thank you for coming uh, tonight, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you sometime later, and I hope you come back and to watch my show again. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. I will definitely try.